All right, let's start with the grip. Uh, gripping the football is a real important thing because uh, pronating at the top of your throw is very important, and if you don't have a proper grip, it's virtually impossible to pronate and get the good spiral and the accuracy and everything that you need uh, in throwing a football. So I want these guys to get a grip, and we'll show you. Both of them put your ball right here, Stevie. You see the middle finger is pretty much uh, at least parallel to or on the stripe. It depends on the size of your hand. The guy with a real big hand might have that finger down here, the finger way up here. And uh, a smaller hand, a lot of times, they'll have it up more toward the top of the stripe, and the finger will be up in here. But uh, anyway, you want this finger separated from this one. Uh, there's, a, there's a seam on the ball. If both of you guys could show this seam, and the way your finger runs, see this finger runs pretty much parallel with this seam right here. So when you grip the ball, and you got it with the laces here, and, and uh, I know Stevie gets it, he likes it with his little finger over there, and this one over more. This one's got it on, uh, on the, uh, you know, on the big seam right there. Little fingers on the seam too, but they're very, very similar grips, and uh, that's kind of a little bit of an individual thing on that about how it feels to you, just so you have control of the ball. And it is good to have your fingers on these seams somewhere, this big seam. Now this little little seam on the ball, that finger running parallel to it, gets that finger up toward the point. And when you throw and you pronate at the top, that finger's got to be the last thing off. And you, like I say, you can't, uh, you can't throw a ball properly without having a good grip on it. Uh, one of the common faults that people get uh, that I see is they'll get these fingers across the ball and these two will be fairly close together. It's almost like a baseball pitcher gripping a baseball where they get it out in their fingers and these fingers are close to each other. You see it would be hard to pronate and get this finger off the ball last if, uh, if you have those fingers close together. They also throw the ball very hard, but when they throw it uh, with this bad grip on there, it pushes the, as, as they let it go, they have to cut the ball, which means their, their palm goes this direction instead of their palm and little and their thumb starting to the ground. Uh, what happens is when they when a when when they throw it with this bad grip, both fingers come off and they cut the ball up here at the top. They may flip their hand over back here, and you'll see it flipped over properly down here when they finish. But they actually cut the ball at the top, and they push the the back of the ball goes up and a little left. Might even not you may not have a real good spiral, but it pushes the nose down, and that's a very hard ball to catch. And a lot of these guys, they can really throw it because they're strong arm guys and things, but it's a real hard ball to catch for the receiver. When you throw properly and you have the right grip and this finger's the last thing off and you're pronating here, to which means you're, you're, as you let it go, your thumb's starting toward the ground and it'll come down and it'll face your, your pocket over here on your left side. As you throw and turn, your thumb will go down and, and, uh, it'll turn right toward your pocket. When that happens, then the ball will ride at least level, and it's an easy ball to catch. And you can throw it as velocity-wise as hard as you do the other ball, but this is much easier to catch, and it'll get there really quickly. And uh, it's an easy ball to catch for the receiver. Because uh, I laughed, I told a quarterback one time that was changing his grip, I said, you don't, uh, you don't do this for you. You can throw the ball hard either way. Uh, you may not be able to pronate at the top, but you throw the ball hard, it'll get there hard. I said, you do this for the receiver so he can catch it when it gets there. And he started laughing, and he did it every time after that, so I got my point across to him. And uh, But he did understand that the receiver is important in this thing because if you throw a ball that they can't catch, you don't get credit for it. You're 0 for 1 if you throw one like that. First, ensure the football is the correct size for the thrower. Manufacturers print size guides on their packaging. Here are the basic sizes broken down by age. For six to nine year olds, use the peewee size. For nine to 12 years, the junior size. 12 to 14 years, the youth size. 15 or older, use the official sized football. But please note that the official sized footballs have high school, collegiate, and pro versions. Ensure the middle finger is on or parallel to the white stripe of the football. The fourth finger, and perhaps the fifth, depending on the thrower's hand size, should be on the laces. 
The index finger should run parallel to the ball's seam. Avoid having the middle and index finger too close together.